So we're here at the SID Display Week here at the iZone. And uh, hi, so who are you? Uh, hi, I'm Marta. I'm the PR for the XTPL company. Um, and we are very happy that we won uh, on the real award at the iZone. Let me introduce you to Philippe Granek, the inventor of our technology for printing ultra precise uh, like conductive lines. So hi. Hello, hi, I'm Philip uh, with XTPL. Uh, really happy about being here in uh, Los Angeles and uh, maybe I can explain you uh, what XTPL does. XTPL provides a technology for printing extremely fine structures using nanomaterials. We have developed a special unit for printing. It's, we call it a printing head, XTPL printing head. It has a uh, uniquely designed printing unit and electrical uh, uh, um, controls that control the, the, the position of the ink. Uh, we like to say that this uh, control of the deposition of the ink is like playing music to nanoparticles. We play the music, they, they start to dance, and by dancing they form very, very fine structures that are impossible to be printed with standard printing technologies like screen printing, inkjet printing. So it gives you a lot of value and when, when you go to very fine structures for uh, uh, manufacturing of parts of displays or various types of printed electronic because devices. Because this looks like it's very small. What are you talking yeah. about? Nano? So this, 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 this is, let's say, uh, about 100 times more thinner than the human hair. So that's about half micrometer. And maybe. why do you show this here? Are you printing that small? Yeah, we're printing that small and that's, that's, the, that's the whole uh, thing here that you can be printing in additive manufacturing even at the sub micrometer resolution so you can go below single micrometer ideally we print a few micron lines but you can go even to uh, below 100 nanometers potentially and this is not possible with any other existing printing method in the world uh, where you show this flexible display here is yeah. it something to do with that yeah so we can print structures also on flexible substrates so our structures that we print can be also flexible and like i said this uh, this, this can work on glass on foils and you can print various materials metallic conductive structures but also quantum dots and uh, semiconducting materials at very high uh, resolution. So when you talk about the dance, what does that mean? You, does it mean there's some kind of swing happening? Dan yeah, so, 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 the... so I don't know if this, this is pr probably uh, could be helpful. So you see the ink here, it's a wet uh, droplet of the ink with individual nanoparticles inside, the small dots, and then we make them move together to make a very narrow, narrow structure because the electrical field forces them to move like this and the control of the electric field is what I call this music that uh, makes the nanoparticles move. And, and this move is, like I said, can be called a dance within the liquid surface and then afterwards we dry the liquid and the solid structure stays on the surface and it can be used as electrical connector or um, whatever purpose you want, want it to be used for. So right here, it's, what is this uh, that's showing here that's is it an example of what would be printed? No, this is actually uh, a structure uh, that is you know, better seen with the microscope, but there are very tiny wires between these electrical pads, and some of the wires are broken, and we are repairing them. We are healing this broken structure by applying our additive manufacturing, and it's like uh, a good example of our application uh, for open defect repair. Uh, if you have like a bad pixel uh, and not not working pixel in your display before you ship it to your customers, you want to repair this pixel by uh, healing uh, some of these uh, broken lines. So this is like a, a repairing machine. It's like one of the let's say application fields is to do repairs. Obviously, we we are hungry for other applications as well. But this is a good application where our company can already provide value today. Can you fix dead pixels? We can fix some classes of dead pixels, some classes of defects so that... What kind of display, like LCD or OLED? For or OLED, for LCDs, and uh, the, 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 the particular class is called open defects, where you have a line that is broken, that is not electrically conductive anymore, so you come with a small metallic patch, you close the line, it's electrically conductive again, it's very fine, and it uh, activates the pixel again. So maybe we can sit back uh, down. So, um, um, why did you win the price right here at the iZone? Like, Sorry? why is this so important? Well, I think the, 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 the application of additive manufacturing of printing technologies at this very fine resolution can be potentially interested, interesting not just for the defect repair in the displays, but also to deposit other classes of materials like quantum dots for light emission at very high precision. And we hope, and we had a lot of discussions uh, with potential partners this, these days, that this, this, this would be a growing business for us. But uh, the way that quantum dot displays are going to be made, right? They're going to be made like in huge fabs yeah. that just print like huge things, yeah. right? So but where, where's your space in that market? Well, we, because we, you're just making 
small things, right? We're making small things uh, and today we're making them with a single uh, printing unit. So uh, we are in the process of scaling the printing unit so you will have multiple printing heads uh, joined together so then you can print faster on the large surfaces and this way you know the, the, we will get it to transition to work on larger surfaces and to the more industrial applications where speed and throughput is of, of uh, essence. So you would print large surfaces of what? Like the whole display? Uh, you know elements of display depending if this should be you know uh, parts of electrical circuitry part of electrical conductive structures are very fine or depositing uh, light emitting quantum dots locally uh, so this is you know where we had just initial discussions here uh, hopefully some of them will convert to to projects so you kind of discussions with what kind of companies uh, equipment manufacturers that will work on supplying you know uh, final equipment to display industry uh, they would be interested in integrating our printing unit in their machines and then the end users being the touchscreen uh, manufacturers and the display manufacturers who are just interested to understand you know how our technology can fit into their technology roadmaps and how we could think of potential future developments not for this particular generation of the product but maybe for n plus and two future generations where uh, this technology can play a role so uh, what's your background where are you based we are in Europe actually in Poland uh, in a city called Wrocław a really uh, interesting place with a lot of uh, universities, so we have a lot of uh, uh, well-educated people there. Our labs are filled with uh, smart people, in, you know, coming from chemistry background, um, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, physics, uh, even mathematics, and uh, you know, software uh, software experts. So it's a good mixture of people that we can get there. Uh, we don't have to compete against uh, you know companies like uh, companies in Silicon Valley. So we have uh, you know maybe easier access to talents there. Uh, but we are also establishing a footprint now in Bay Area because of the potential customer base is not really in Poland for us. It's rather um, US and Asian markets that are interesting for us, so we will be present here as well. And how many people? We are now 35 people back in Poland and establishing a, a small group here in U uh, US as well. And what do they all do? What's the roles of all these people? Well, they, they work like on electrical uh, 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 s uh, systems here to you know to design the electrical circuitry, to design the software that drives the head, the mechanical part, uh, so the mechanical components, uh, the chemistry of the inks, so the, the particular inks that are being used to print uh, nanomaterials. This is the, the chemists that work on that. And uh, these are these are the examples of silver inks that can that can uh, help us print uh, uh, electrically conductive structures like s silver inks. Uh, but we do also uh, work on other uh, metallic structures that can be printed. Uh, we like to show that uh, our printing head comes with uh, some starting kits of materials that you can start printing right away. Uh, but if people are interested in you know using their own inks, we are also open for that and uh, try to help them optimize their ink for this particular printing unit. But is this a, is this like a, pr a prototype or is this already fully working? Yeah. So so for the uh, defect repair, so the the, the the initial niche that we are aiming at uh, display manufacturing, this is a working uh, working solution, and we are now uh, in process of integrating that into the tools of equipment manufacturers uh, who are uh, at the end of the day uh, uh, supplying equipment to the uh, module manufacturers, the display modules or touchscreen modules. Because uh, one of the problems with the display industry is this yield problem and then uh, there's so many displays that just get thrown in the trash. Yeah, I think, I mean, if, to, as, as you're pushing the limits of uh, resolution and getting finer and finer pitch sizes, automatically some of the structures will have defects and some of the defects uh, makes uh, it makes sense to to repair them and you know if you have a tool that can improve your yield a little bit and this is where we can come into play and uh, make people happy. Would there be some kind of system with cameras that can detect where the thing could be so, going in and so repairing? So we, we think there are already pretty uh, good uh, systems for defect detection and defect qualification out there. We don't want to go there. We want to be the guys who, you know, after the defect uh, is uh, classified and detected, we are the ones to repair it, right? So, so we, maybe we Radiant, wanna... the camera from Radiant, or yeah, one of those? Yeah, yeah, they, and they, they, they identify and then you go and fix it, maybe? Yeah, yeah. so, so I, uh, usually I, I would expect this is like a two-step uh, process. First, you uh, look for the defect you classify them and then some defects can be repaired with this method some defect can be repaired with that method some defects cannot be repaired so you need to discard the, the whole module probably so and we would be one of the uh, repair met methods that is good for open defect repair not for the short circuits if you have a short circuit defect then it's uh, really good to use lasers just to ablate the defect uh, 
our technology would not bring uh, you know advantage there but for the open defect uh, having the possibility to deposit very fine structures in a fast and easy way uh, this is I think where uh, where the processing time and and the costs of such a repair is of uh, advantage in our case